Hey guys, this is Josh here with Trillium Wild Edibles, and today I want to bring you guys a book review on the Pearson Field Guide to Mushrooms by Kent H. McKnight and Vera B. McKnight. This is a really good book on the subject of wild mushrooms, and it does have some flaws, and in this book review we're going to go over some of the good things about this book, and then some of the bad things about this book. Alright, now whenever we first get into the Peterson Field Guide to Mushrooms, one thing that we're going to notice is this very awesome color diagram, this brown, but it is colored, diagram of the various shapes and types of mushrooms. And in this, they give you a basic idea of the different shapes of fungus or fungi and the color plates or the color pictures that correspond with those basic groups, as you can see here, like plate 5, plate 6 and 7. It covers stinkhorns, false truffles, and bird's nests on plates 43 and 48. So that's one of the really nice things about this book is that you can go to the very front and you can find the basic shape of mushroom you're looking for. And then you can go to those corresponding color plates in this book. So that is a really nice thing about it. Now in the back of the book it does have a ruler that covers inches and centimeters as you can see here which goes all the way down the side of this book, which this can be really helpful, especially out in the field, if you're not bringing any calipers with you. And another really nice thing about in the back of the book is as you can see here, it has another picture diagram that explains some of the different shapes that you're going to see and some of the different textures and scale types. And it gives you a really good picture. So this is kind of like a pictorial glossary, if you will, of the different shapes and textures that you might find within different mushrooms. So this is very, very helpful if you don't understand some of the terms that are used within this book. In the very front, just like all of the other Peterson Field Guide books, it has a section on how to use this book. Now in this mushroom guide, it is a lot more technical, and it does have a lot more technical terms involved. So it goes into a lot more depth in this portion of the book than the other field guides generally do. As you can see here, it gives you an idea of the different illustrations and legend pages. It gives you an idea of different steps that you want to take whenever you are harvesting mushrooms and even all the way to making a spore print and it gives you in-depth information on how to actually take a spore print. It gives you enough to take a very good spore print. Now another thing that's really nice about the very beginning of this book and the how to use it section is it covers like things like the general organization and you know they say here for convenience the mushrooms in this guide are grouped into three different parts of the book. Gills on the underside of the cap and part one covers the non-gilled important of portion of edible species such as morels and then it goes through and explains the rest of that further throughout this book. It also goes through and explains how they lay out their species description. It has very good line drawing figures to help you understand the line drawings that you might find in the colored plates and to give you a good idea of the terms that are also used in this book. So this is like a short pictorial glossary that also has a good description of what each one of these things are. Now obviously like any good field guide this book does have a glossary as you can see here it has a really good glossary it goes over terms like acidulous, adenate, adenext, as I can't even read that from here, allantoid, amyloid, angular, annulus and has a lot of really complex terms throughout this book so you're definitely going to be flipping back to this glossary for reference because I know I certainly did and still do all the time. This book is very good for its glossary and its tec technical terms to help you get a really good idea of the terminology that's used in the science of mycology. Now another really awesome thing about this book that was helpful for me personally was these palette pointers as you can see here it's called Going Wild with Mushrooms in the Kitchen by Ann Dow. And it has approximately 20 pages of actual recipes and it goes through and gives you some basic tips on preparing and preserving you know, unpacking your basket from canning, pickling, and drying, you know, to when the basket's overflowing, what do you do if you find too much? But then it goes through and then it actually goes one step further and gives you recipes, like for example, the pink and white bowleet salad with Meinhard Moser. I've never tried this recipe specifically, however, it is nice to have all of these different recipes, and like I said, there are 20 pages of recipes. Now here we can see that the actual recipes start on page 375 and they go all the way into page 398. So like I said, there's almost 20 full pages of recipes for different mushrooms that are found without this book that are very, very, very common. Now in this book, another thing that's really nice is about halfway through the book, 
they have a section what they call the colored plates and as you can see these are colored paintings or line drawings in some cases there's a few that are actual line drawings but there are over 700 of these so most of the mushrooms are in the colored plates however not all of the mushrooms are because there are over 1,000 different species that are covered in this book but like I said not all of them are in these colored pictures so there isn't something that's going to be an accurate representation of every mushroom that you're going to find. And then now unfortunately though, once you get towards the back of the color plate pictures, the color part is absolutely removed. This is silly. I don't know why they did it this way, but they did. So a lot of the puffballs in the back of the in the back of the color plate section are as you can see in black and white. So that's kind of an issue. You know, I don't know why they went from color to black and white. Maybe money was an issue for the publisher. I have no clue why they did that, but they did. So that's something to keep in mind, is that the colored plates aren't full color for a few of the last plates. Now, whenever we get into the actual descriptions of the mushrooms, you can see that they're very, very in-depth. It also gives you a common name, which it explains in the very front of the book how they come up with the common names of some of these mushrooms, but it also gives you the Latin or the scientific name, and then over here in bold, next to each mushroom, if there is a corresponding colored plate, you'll see this PL.2, and that means plate 2. So if we refer to colored plate 2, for example, okay, here we are at colored plate 2, and we can see the different morels that are listed here on this colored plate. Now under each mushroom, you're going to find a good basic description of the size of the cap, and then it's going to get in the size and shape of the cap, and then it's, then it's going to get more in depth. As you can see here, it goes through centimeters. It covers the different lengths of the centimeters of the cap, of the width and the length of the stalk. It goes through and explains the spores. And most of the mushrooms, not every mushroom is this in depth. And right here is a perfect example of that because the golden trumpets, as you can see here, it starts off and it gives you just like, you know, the normal explanation that you would see in the rest of the book. However, whenever you see, you know, color plate 20 and we're sitting here and we're reading this and it says broadly be becoming broadly convex or nearly flat. We flip the page to read it because there's a semicolon. And next thing we know, we have an absolute blank page and then another one. So there are some mushrooms that are completely inaccurate because it's missing. It's just missing pages in the middle of the book for no damn reason. Excuse my language there, but there is no reason for this. And this is one of the biggest problems I've had with this book is there have been a few times that mushrooms I've been wanting to identify. The description is incomplete. It starts off, as you can see here, with the golden trumpets, there's barely a paragraph, and it hasn't even finished that paragraph. And next thing you know, you've got two blank pages. I mean, just boom, two blank pages. And then once we flip past those blank pages, we can see it actually starts off with a completely different species here. So this is, this is in my opinion, unacceptable. However, don't let that deter you from buying this book because it is still a great resource and it has been very helpful for me. And it has paid itself off up to this point, that is for sure. Another really good example of how incomplete this book can sometimes be is, for example, right here under the yellow waxy cap, it gives its full description and you can see just how long these descriptions usually are for each mushroom. So that gives you an idea for the last one that we just talked about on how incomplete it really is. And then it's in the middle of talking about the fruiting in groups on soil and carnivorous and deciduous for hyphen. And then what do we have? Two blank pages. So that is a huge problem in this book is that it just, it's absolutely incomplete. It wasn't finished. The publisher made a lot of mistakes. And this book is also from 1979. So that's another problem within itself is it is old. And a lot of the information is outdated because we've discovered a lot more things about mushrooms since then. Now this book does go through and organize each section of the book by parts as you can see here. We see guild mushrooms here for this part. And then we can see a little bit further back, part three, puffballs and their relatives by gastromycetes. I don't know if that's exactly how it's pronounced, but maybe it's gastromycetes. I don't know. Whenever we're looking through the color plates, another thing you're going to notice is it gives each mushroom in a certain number. It also will list 
whether the mushroom is inedible, like you can see a pot with a slash through it, means it's inedible. You're also going to see a skull and a crossbones if the plant, or mushroom in this case, is poisonous, which that symbols are used in all of the Peterson Field Guides, so that's kind of nice that they've kept those same symbols and they didn't change that. And you're also going to get a very short, basic description of the mushroom, just like you can see here. If you look for the column stinkhorn, or Clathrus columnatus, let's see here, column stinkhorn, right there. There we are. And we can see just what this mushroom looks like. And if we go back to the column stinkhorn, we see that it's on page 345. And then we will see the column stinkhorn, or Clathrus columnatus. As you can see here, it gives a more in-depth description. And thankfully, this one isn't incomplete like the other ones. There are just a couple that are incomplete that go to uh, blank pages after that. Some of the descriptions are shorter than others. Alright, so like I said, that should give you guys a pretty good understanding of the Peterson Field Guide to Mushrooms. And like I said before, this is a really good book, and it does have some cons, obviously. The blank pages out of nowhere is a real pain in the butt whenever you're out in the field and you think you might have one of those mushrooms. That does suck, and it has happened to me a couple times as well. So make sure you keep that in mind. However, if you want to add this book to your resources, it's certainly worth the 13 bucks that it's probably going to run you online, like at places like Amazon. So I do very highly recommend this book. It is certainly, like I said, worth the $13 to $14 that it's probably going to cost you online at places like Amazon. It may run you all the way up to 20 bucks at like a local bookstore, like your local Barnes & Noble. However, this book has paid itself off just for helping me to identify edible mushrooms like oysters and make sure that I know exactly what I'm harvesting or hen of the woods and chicken of the woods especially, chanterelles and to not confuse jack-o'-lanterns because this book does cover a lot of poisonous mushrooms so you can get a really good idea of toxic lookalikes and related species just by looking through this book. So I thank you guys for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it and I hope you learned something. If you want to learn more about edible or medicinal plants, make sure to subscribe.